Welcome to part three of this keyword research module. In this video, I want to talk about competition analysis because we've determined keywords that could, the keyword that being could, be a good fit for our business. However, can we actually compete for those keywords? Because in many cases, we simply can't. So here is how to determine if we can compete and really get a good idea of if we really have the budget again to be able to do that. It's not only if we can, but also if it matches our budget. So let's dive into it. The first thing I'll do is recap where exactly we're at. If you remember back to the seven step process, so far we have number one, we checked and downloaded our existing rankings. Number two, we identified two to three competitors. Number three, we checked those competitors' rankings and then go ahead and export it and download that data. In step number four, we optionally manually downloaded additional keywords via additional keyword research. In step five, we cleaned up that big list of keywords. In step six, we mapped that keyword list to pages. And in step seven, we analyzed those keywords and decided which ones do we actually want to focus on. Well, we kind of did that, but we didn't quite finish that because the final step of that, if you remember back to the keyword analysis training, is yeah, we're gonna look at the current rankings, the search volume, the clicks, the buyer intent, and the keyword intent, but the thing we missed out is this part at the bottom right here, which is competition. Because sure, the search volume is great, right? And the intent is perfect. However, that doesn't mean anything if we don't have the budget to compete against this keyword. And if our website simply isn't a strong enough authority currently to again compete for this keyword. So in this video, that's what I'll show you how to determine. Now, if you remember back to these three sheets right here, I prepared a few keyword map examples showing you kind of the end result of what this would look like. And what we're gonna do in this training is go through these just quick examples here. There's not many, but it's just enough to show you some quick examples of how exactly you would use this data. Again, specifically looking at the competition aspect and seeing if we can actually compete. Now, in terms of how we're going to do this, we're going to use the same old tool as before, which is Ahrefs. It's going to allow us to analyze the backlink profiles, the domain rating of the competitors that we plan to go against, including also the data we already have, which is already in the spreadsheet. A lot of keywords, we can literally just look at that current spreadsheet and determine if we can actually compete. Now, one of the first things people mistake when they get into this is they look at metrics like this. This is keyword difficulty. And they say, okay, the keyword difficulty is five, so I can definitely compete against this keyword. And that is absolutely wrong. Or worse, this is so much worse. They will look at Google's keyword planner and they'll see this little thing here that says competition. And they'll say, oh, this is low competition, so it is easy, except that it isn't based on SEO whatsoever however, and it's completely wrong. So I've said it a million times before, but here is my thoughts on those keyword difficulty scores and just blindly trusting and using them as a metric of how competitive a keyword is. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Essentially, keyword difficulty scores suck caveat when used wrong. Meaning that if you just look at the keyword difficulty score, it is absolutely terrible. It is completely useless and says absolutely nothing. However, when it is used correctly, it can actually be useful. So let me open up the spreadsheets once again and let me explain why that is the case. So you can see here, I do pull in the keyword difficulty score. This is the average difficulty for both the main keyword and all of the secondary keywords. And you can see here, obviously it's extremely low, 2, 0.33, 2, 6.62, which would suggest this is a very, very low difficulty and it could well be. However, the problem is if you actually look up the definition of keyword difficulty in terms of Ahrefs and how they calculate it, Mr. Editor, please pop that up for everyone, then what you'll see is that they actually don't look at the overall domain. All they're analyzing is the backlinks to this specific page. What that means is that if this page 
is on the New York Times, is on some massive website, IGN, if you saw any previous example, then what you'll find is that the competition seems relatively low because the page itself doesn't have many backlinks. However, the page is on a website that is a domain rating of 80 or 90. And what that means in short is that we absolutely cannot rank for this page, for this keyword. However, the keyword difficulty score may be quite reasonable. So the keyword difficulty score is helpful if and only if we also check first the domain rating of the page's ranking. So what we're going to use keyword difficulty for in this case is only for sorting out the keywords that we already know we can rank for. And how exactly do you do that? There's two ways we can do this. Number one is pages we're already ranking quite well for. In this case, on this website, it's only really this one, which is client ranking, position number five for rank and rent website. We know immediately that we can rank for this keyword because we're already in position number five. Likewise, we can check the same thing for our competition, where our competition is also ranking in position number two for this keyword. And then going over to the other examples, you can see here, position number eight, position number two, position number three, position number five. Meaning we know we can rank for all these keywords here simply because we're doing it or the competitors that we picked out, which by the way, we're very, very careful to pick out competitors that are similar domain rating to us, a similar DR to us, they're ranking for this keyword already. And again, if they're a similar size website to us, we can probably rank for this also. Likewise, one more example, the third one, you can see here, the competitor is ranking position nine for this and the competitor for this one is ranking position 10, which again means presuming that competitor is a good competitor, that we actually did our research correctly first, so we picked one that is a similar size website to ours, then we should also be able to rank for this keyword. From there, we're simply using keyword difficulty to say how many links are we gonna need to basically build to this page to rank it, which is all it really analyzes properly, right? So we can see here, okay, this one has a difficulty of 0.5, which is extremely low, very, very easy, and it has a total volume of 7,720 searches per month. And then the estimated value is $4,632, comparing to this one up here, where it's a little bit higher search volume from 7,700 to 11,000, almost 12,000. And then the estimated value is this. Now we can determine basically looking at this plus other ones. In this case, both of these are pretty good because this difficulty here is much, much lower. But again, 0 0.5 to 3.33 is, is barely any difference at that level. In this case, I'd probably want to focus on both of these pages. But we can look at all this data and we use in difficulty to help us kind of make those determinations. Now, if we want to, we can add some cool little stuff here. So like conditional formatting, if we go ahead and go down to conditional formatting, and what we can do is, if I open this up real quick, just an example, we'll do color scale, right? And basically, you can have, say, the lower is better. So if I just do this real quick, I think that's correct already. Then you can see here the lower score, the lower the difficulty, the better. Obviously, that doesn't take into account, that's only looking at difficulty, that's not also considering value, right? It's not also considering the value of the total search for it, but it's one single factor we can look at when picking out keywords that are good. So again, looking at this, we only want to look at ones that, again, we're already ranking for, ideally anywhere from position five through 20, or our competition is already ranking for that we're not ranking for, when, hey, they're in position nine for this. If they're a similar competitor, we should be able to compete. And then, and only then, do we look at, okay, what is the difficulty? And in which case, we can compete. We have a similar size website to them, and the difficulty is really, really low. So it's not gonna take many backlinks or anything like that to rank for this. It's a very quick way of analyzing keywords with this existing data without doing a ton of additional research. That is essentially how we're gonna use keyword difficulty correctly because we're also considering domain rating because we picked out, again, competitors that are a similar size to us. So if we're already ranking on this position five through 20, or our competitors are already ranking up to position 20, then we know a similar size site is ranking for this keyword as us. And it means that we can then take into account, okay, what is the difficulty? Because that actually plays a part. The actual backlinks, again, links to this page from other sites and that matters when the DR is similar. So let me open up the slides again and let me run through this to explain it in a little bit more detail so you make sure you definitely understand. So through this process, I'm trying to identify what I would call key pages and in the previous steps, we call it focal pages, but this is the main 
pages that we want to focus on. Now, I believe there are three types of key pages. There are quick wins, there are competitor-based quick wins, two that we previously mentioned in the slides were saying, okay, where are we currently ranking between position five and 20? That is our personal, our own site's quick wins because we can probably do some internal links, maybe tweak a few on-page factors, maybe even build a few backlinks and quickly increase our rankings for those pages. Likewise, if our competition is ranking position even one through 20 and we're not ranking that well for it, then hey, maybe this is a neglected page or maybe it's a page we don't have currently. We can build again some internal links. We can optimize it. We can create the page we don't have it. And again, very, very quickly rank because our competitors are a similar size website to us and they are getting pulling off ranking for this keyword. Beyond that, however, there is also what we call our main target. So let me give you a simple example. If you're making a local business website, your main keyword is gonna be like London or LA, right? So roofers in London, roofers in Los Angeles, something like that. That's your main target keyword. However, you know that that's pretty competitive and it's gonna take a while to kind of build up getting rankings for that keyword. So that's your main target. But in the meantime, you have these quick wins and your quick wins is gonna be, so if you're in London, for example, you have all these different areas of London. So firstly, you can just divide it, say you have North London and create a page for North London. Maybe you just focus on North London. So you have a North London, roofers page, right? And then within North London, you've got your, your Highgate, your Hampstead, I don't, I don't know London, but there's different areas of London. These will be either quick wins because you already have a page that's already positioned five through 20, then you can go ahead and optimize to try and rank for this. Or it could be that you look at a competitor and while you don't have a page for this location yet, whether your page isn't particularly ranking well for this yet, but your competitors is, well, hey, if they're doing this and it's working for them and they're a similar size site to us, then if we put some effort into this, we can absolutely go ahead and rank it. So that is, hey, your quick wins sort of there's your competitor based quick wins, but in the long term, your main target, your big focal point is gonna be that LA keyword, that London keyword, that big win that's gonna make you a lot of money. Now, in the case of local, that may be a single keyword. If you're doing e-commerce, this could be hundreds of keywords still, because it's a ton of categories and everything like that that you can focus on ranking for in the long term. It just depends, but these are what we call our key pages. Now, how exactly we determine if we can rank for them, Firstly, we can look at some of the factors I mentioned previously, the quick wins and everything are relatively easy to kind of determine. If you're already on page one, we can probably rank for this pretty easily. But the other main things that I really want to look at if I'm doing a full analysis is going to be the average domain rating, meaning I'm going to look at the top three competitors that are similar to us, meaning we we'll exclude the DR90 websites, you have 80 websites and so on, sites that are similar to ours, and I'm going to check what is the average domain rating of those sites. Again, there's an HRS metric we explained previously. Go back and watch your previous videos if you don't know what I'm talking about. Then we're going to look at the average referring domains specifically to that page, meaning that if they have 10 referring domains, there's 10 different websites linked to theirs to the specific page, then we again ideally need to match that. So we'll look at the averages of the top three competitors also to see how many they have. And that is great. And that is what we need to do to match them today. However, it doesn't consider what if they're building five links, 10 links, 20 links a month, well suddenly it's actually a lot more competitive than we believe, right? So we also wanna consider the average backlink velocity, right? Which means how many of these new links are you building every single month? So what this data allows us to analyze is number one, can we actually compete? The average domain rating is a very, very quick analysis we do in a couple seconds and determine really, really quickly, can we actually compete? And if it's the case where every website, again, is like PC Gamer, IGN, massive websites, there's no small sites in there, then the answer is probably no. We can't compete, it's too competitive, it's all massive authority sites. And unfortunately, it seems to be kind of lean in that way these days where a lot of keywords are just massive authority sites that we simply can't get in. Unfortunately, that is just the name of the game. A lot of it is authority sites and you just simply can't compete for those types of keywords, again, without building a massive authority site, which you probably don't have the budget to do. So can we compete? And then beyond that, how exactly do we compete? How much is it gonna cost us to compete in terms of, hey, they have 30 referring domains, so we need to go ahead and build 30 referring domains to this page specifically, not to mention other ones, do we have the budget to compete for this? Do we have the time to go out there and acquire that many links? Sometimes you do, but in other cases you don't. So it's just something that we check to do this 
properly. Now, what I want to do is run you through a real quick example of doing this just so you understand this overall process. So what I've done here is I've gone into Ahrefs Keyword Explorer, I've searched for best massage chair. This keyword has 10,000 searches per month. And obviously if you blindly look at the keyword difficulty, you say medium. But what actually is it? Well, let's look at it properly, okay? We're gonna scroll down here. And we're gonna first look at this DR column, again, the domain rating. Now, what do we see immediately? Number one is New York Times' wire cutter with a domain rating of 93. So what does that mean? It means we're absolutely not gonna compete against them specifically on any level. So we're gonna exclude them completely, draw a line through this. This is not who we're going against. Now. Next up, we have a domain rating 16 website. This is really, really good sign. So that is pretty good. Next up, we have a domain rating 65, pretty high, but again, that actually makes sense. And beyond that, we have a domain rating of 24, which again, makes sense. That is competitors we can actually compete against, right? So again, I ideally want to skip over the 65 one, but unfortunately, there isn't any of us that's smaller. So again, the average is gonna be 16, plus 65, plus 24, this is the competitors we're going to compete against. So what I would do is I would average that. So 16 plus 65 plus 24 divided by three, that gives us a domain rating of 34, meaning that is what we need to aim for. Now, does that mean that if you just get a domain rating of 34, you will rank for this keyword? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean that. There's absolutely exceptions at play here. And this website ranking with a domain rating of 16 seems to be more of an exception, if you look at the competitors in general, than the standard, than the rule. So it doesn't exactly mean that if you get a 34 domain rating, you will rank. But what it does mean is you can probably get away with ranking if, again, you have a domain rating 34 plus hidden the various other factors, right? It's more so what is the minimum we need to get to rank for this versus, again, this is if you hit this, you will absolutely rank, right? So that's the first one looking at the domain rating, again, of sites that you can actually compete against. Again, excluding New York Times, you can't compete against them. Excluding Amazon, excluding exclude New York Mag, excluding Rolling Stones, excluding WWD. And this site is actually okay, 63. This again, in line with what exactly we're competing against. The next thing we want to look at is this column here called domains, which stands for referring domains. It's similar to backlinks, except there's only a single website, meaning if a single website links to you two times, that is two backlinks, and it's just one referring domain. Now again, this is something that we're going to have to match our competitors to compete. So if we look up the competitors, again, that we picked, which is Massage Chair Store, The Good Body, and Prime Massage Chairs. You can see here, you have 28 referring domains, 39 referring domains, and 43 referring domains. So we average that, again, add them all up and divide them by three. That gives us a referring domains average of 37. And the final thing we want to consider is the backlink velocity. Now, if I go ahead and just quickly show you one example of how to do that, I've already done all the, the examples for you, but if I just quickly open one up, there's two ways you can do this in pretty simple ways, okay? So number one is that you're going to open this up and you can see here they're throwing domains here when this graph loads. And you can basically just measure the difference over, say, a 12-month period. And obviously, this is a long time now, so this is one year. And you can kind of measure the difference, obviously, from none all the way up to... 29, you can kind of see that overall velocity and 29 divided by uh, 12, you can kind of figure that out that way. You can also go into these um, backlinks like new, lost, broken, and you can also check this way, but it doesn't account for backlinks lost. So that first way is probably the quickest and easiest way of doing it. Now back to the slide too, because we've already done this, you can see the average velocity for these three sites is 1.3. Four. So overall, if you do a very, very basic link gap analysis or gap analysis, what we can determine is that as an example, let's say our website is currently a domain rating of 28 and our target based on the average of our competition is 34. And the referring domains to this page for us is zero. Our target, again, based on the competitors, is 35. And the velocity, again, we're building no links to this page currently and the target 
is 1.34. What does this mean? It means that we need to build up our domain rating by about six points. We need to build our referring domains by about 35 to the specific page. And with the velocity, we need to do two things. Number one, we need to consider that it's quite a low velocity. So we start building 10 links a month to this page. It's a little bit unnatural compared to our competition. Beyond that, we also need to account for that the competition is building one additional link every single month. So that also goes into the overall referring domains count. So again, if we're doing this over say six months time, well, six months becomes 43 referring domains, not 35, because you also have to consider that they build a 1.34 links every single month on top of this. Now, if we were to break these down step by step, again, I've kind of covered this, but let's go through it really, really quickly. Again, domain rating being the main thing, can we compete for this keyword? If our domain rate is 28 and the average is 34, yeah, it's possible, but it's probably much easier if we just hit that average of, again, hitting 34. So our target there is to increase the domain rating up to 34, and we do that through link building the other pages on our site, not only just this single page, right? It's an overall practice of improving the overall website, right? Just domain rating, can we compete? Referring domains is next, and I say, okay, we need referring domains, we need backlinks to the specific page, and in this case, we need to aim for around 35 of them because that is the average the competitors have. And all we're doing here is just looking at what exactly is working is mimicking that strategy. Now, you don't need to know what backlinks are or how to build them because we're gonna get into that in the backlinking link building module, but at this point, just understand why exactly we're looking at these things and understanding this idea of a gap analysis. In this case, that we can see that yeah, currently, we can't rank for this keyword. However, it could be a good target because domain rating is pretty similar and the referring domains is maybe achievable with our budget is achievable that we can build 35 backlinks. So if that is achievable, then that fits your budget. But it also, of course, consider the velocity as mentioned previously, because it isn't actually 35 backlinks, because you're not gonna do it all in one month. So you also have to consider the growth. And again, that is something that may skew that data. If you just look at referring domains, you may think, oh, this is easy. What you don't see is that your competitors are just pushing and pushing and pushing and building loads and loads of links here. Well, it's actually a lot more competitive than you first thought, right? So this overall is the same process we use for our link gap analysis, which we're gonna get into in the link builder module, which is much, much more advanced than this. But in the early phases, all we're doing is a quick check of the average domain rating, the average referring domains, and the link velocity that the competitors are using. We'll get into the more advanced stuff as we get further into the training. But that is essentially how you analyze keywords. You look at the current rankings, where are you currently ranking? You look at your search volume and the clicks for those keywords. You look at the buyer intent and the keyword intent and check that it matches what exactly you're looking for with this page and with your overall store. And then you measure the competition as we just covered here and determine can you actually compete? And more than that, do you have the budget? Do you want to actually compete here? Does it make sense in terms of the value of this keyword for the competition that it's gonna cost you to, again, go against this, right? And if we break that into steps, basically step one, check the intent. Step two, check the competition in terms of the keyword difficulty, if it's a quick win type keyword, or again, looking at the average domain rating and things like this afterwards to see if exactly you can compete for this. Then compared to that, if you can compete to this, okay, great. Let's start deciding which ones to prioritize. What is the search form here? How much traffic can I expect to get? What is the clicks here? What is the value of this traffic? And just different factors like that. And then of course, you're also looking at, hey, where am I currently ranking? And where are my competitors currently ranking? Because if this is a quick win, then even if the search volume is a little bit lower, we're already ranking on page 10, we can probably get really, really quick traffic increases just by focusing on this keyword first. So that basically is how you analyze keywords and decide focal pages, which is a huge, huge part of your research part of your campaign. But now you have that, you're probably thinking, uh, well, that's great, but what about the rest of the campaign, All right? Well, this is where we're gonna get into it in the other modules, but I really wanna briefly explain how exactly we're using this data specifically, all right? So really, I wanna break this down to three different types of categories of pages at this point, right? We have key pages, which is, again, the pages we really, really wanna focus on, the quick wins, the big targets, the key main focus pages. 
Then we have just other pages, which, hey, we want to rank them, but they're not really a priority right now. We'll just get round to them when we get round to them. Get the key pages to them first, then go on to the other pages. And then there's also the pages that are just simply too competitive. And we're just checking out the competition for this keyword, and we simply cannot compete for anything on this page. And in which case, hey, let's not waste any effort on this whatsoever, right? Now, just because a keyword is too competitive, that doesn't necessarily mean a page is too competitive. Just a quick note there, because yeah, that main keyword may be too competitive, but there may be a secondary keyword off of that that's the same page that can be ranked. So just double check and do your research properly when it comes to that. Beyond that, again, key pages and other pages, you may not have other pages. If you're just doing local SEO, pretty much everything can be a key page because there's not really enough pages to really complicate the campaign. However, when you're in e-commerce like me, then sure, you can have 50 key pages and still have 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 other pages. So it's just something to consider that, hey, you have these other pages. The only real difference to them is very simple, okay? Key pages, you wanna prioritize things, meaning that you have prioritized on page. You're gonna prioritize getting the on page done on these pages before the other pages. You wanna prioritize getting the internal links built to these pages versus the other pages. And also with Link Builder, this is really the pages that I'm gonna build most of, if not all of the links to besides the homepage, which may even be a key page in and of itself, right? So it just, we use this to prioritize where to focus in the campaign. Then we have the other pages, which we'll get round to as part of the campaign, but it's not the priority. And then we have the pages that, hey, this is just too competitive, right? Either it's too competitive or there's absolutely, here's the opposite here, there's absolutely no keywords here. There's absolutely no volume here. We have certain products where there's nothing we can do with this. So again, we don't wanna waste any effort doing any on-page or anything on here because it simply doesn't matter. It's simply not gonna make any impact on the campaign because there's no search volume or there is search volume, but we simply can't compete against this keyword. And just in case you forgot, here's what the key pages are once again. It's quick wins. It's where you're positioned currently between position five and 20, and it's competitive-based quick wins where there's three competitors we analyzed before, a position between one and 20, but you're again, not currently ranking the same because if the competition are doing it, you can probably do the same thing also. And there's the main target, which is the high volume slash value potential keywords that note also fit in within our competition limit, as in their similar domain rating, and also within our budget, meaning if you have to build 100 foreign domains and you don't have a budget to be able to build 100 foreign domains to compete for this keyword, then again, you will not be able to rank for this keyword because it doesn't fit within your budget. So it's quick wins, competitor-based quick wins, and main targets. And again, recapping that entire process, it's step one, check your existing rankings. Step two, identify two to three competitors. Step three, check your competitor rankings. Step four, manually research additional keywords, optionally. Step five, clean that big keyword list that we showed previously. Step six, map those keywords to pages. And step seven, analyze keywords and decide focal pages like your key pages, your other pages, and the pages that, again, you simply won't focus on whatsoever. That wraps up our keyword research module. If this has been helpful to you, please do me a favor, click the like button below so YouTube recommends this to more people, and also leave a comment below. If you have any questions, I'm happy to expand on them, I'm happy to do Q and A's and everything in the future, and help you guys out and make sure you fully understand all of us. Again, I'm going through this as quickly as I can to make sure that absolutely everything is covered across all of the modules in every single module of this entire course. It's a lot to do. So if you like that, please click the like button, leave a comment, and I'll see you in my next video.